What we're all about here at the ORI is having machines answer three questions. Where am I? What's around me? And what should I do? And they answer those questions so we can have better machines that help us. We used to be around driverless cars and, and, and mobile robotics, but, but our mission's now expanded to all the things that move. So flying vehicles, walking, running vehicles, rolling vehicles, off-road vehicles, in the Arctic kind of vehicles. I've been into robotics for, for a long time. In fact, I'm one of those very few people uh, who had as a reason to become an engineer because I like robotics. And uh, then the question is, okay, well, what do you do with, with, with robots? Where does a machine stop being a machine and start being a robot? That sort of thing is a dishwasher robot. And I could spend hours talking about why, why I find that interesting, yeah. We think about autonomous robots. That's the really interesting case for us. So you can think about robots in a car factory and they're non-autonomous. They're just following a script, doing the same thing again and again. We're interested in robots who can make some decisions for themselves, whether it's an autonomous car deciding how fast to drive, or whether it's Betty deciding which route to take through a building or how long to wait for a door to open. It's a place where we think about putting robots out in the real world rather than just containing them in a lab where we can control everything. You would never, if you're walking around the parks, go, I'm going to work on that problem, if you didn't actually say, well, we're going to get out there, put a big team together and have a go. And that's sort of a fundamental thing of what the ORA is about. Yes, of course, we're going to do excellent science and research and journal papers, and those will be driven by the need to get machines out there and say, can we fly a drone? And can we do an inspection of a chemical plant to see if there's been a problem with it? Can we drive cars? Can we carry people around Milton Keynes? I think the answer is the yes, but in doing so, you find really interesting problems that you have to nail. Testing robotics in the real world is really important uh, because the real world is too complex for us to be able to simulate in the lab. Uh, and so we can design an algorithm that works really well in our simulation and what we expect to see, but when we take it out and apply it in the real world, we discover all kinds of conditions we never considered, and we need to be able to plan for them and adapt to them to deploy these robots uh, long term. We want to put robots in extreme or difficult environments, whether that's on the road, whether that's in hospitals, or whether that's on the glacier. We want to push the, the forefront of the basic science that we do, so understanding autonomy, AI, machine learning, but really see how that fares in the environments where it's going to operate in the future, in the next five or 10 years, when we're really putting autonomous robots out in the world. We tend to underplay the complexity of, of standing and we're one of a few mammals that are able to stand up and walk around on two feet. So to walk, it has to be able to uh, plan complicated motions of its center of mass, to be able to perceive objects and to avoid those, and then to execute this complicated trajectory, uh, continuously perceiving and rebalancing as it goes. So we're really excited to get using Animal to climb over uneven terrain, to climb staircases, and to uh, navigate around amongst the parks of Oxford. Our long-term goal will be to automate all of the tasks that might be dull, dangerous or dirty for humans to perform. Having robots that uh, not only can clean uh, your floors but going around and performing the chores that somebody would have to perform. It's really exciting to, to work in this kind of walking robotics. And there are so many complicated little things that it takes to make a system like this work. And I think that's really what, what gets you up in the morning, really gets you in here. I feel very lucky being here, uh, being in this environment, uh, particularly with the strength of the ORI uh, and the sort of background, the pedigree that we've created here for the ORI. Uh, I get to interact with some brilliant students. Um, I get to make machines do stuff, learn. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally in my element here. Let's be clear, there's never going to be fewer machines. There's always going to be more machines. They're going to be cheaper, faster, more useful for us. We're chasing problems in robotics that I believe will be transformative for society and for the economy. How lucky am I to be you know, having a place like this and, and building a place like this with Oxford at that sort of time?